Hello and welcome to this Bioprocess International Ask the Expert webcast. I'm your host, Leah Roslin, the online editor for Bioprocess International. Before we get started, just a couple of notes. This webcast is being recorded and will be made available for replay in the multimedia section of our website. We've muted the audio lines, but we welcome you to type in your questions for our speaker in the chat window on your screen. After the presentation, we will begin the question and answer portion, and I will ask our speaker your questions from the chat window. Your questions in the chat window will only be visible to myself and our speaker. So thank you for joining us today. It is now my pleasure to introduce our speaker, Gerald Plateau from JSI Life Sciences. Yes, thank you for the uh, kind introduction. So good afternoon, everyone, and uh, good morning to the people joining us in the U.S. So in our webinar today, uh, I will talk about the use of the protein A resin M3A3 for the purification of antibody fragments. I will begin with a general overview of antibody fragments and their potential binding to protein A. Then I will show the crystal structure of a complex between a single domain antibody and the M-sphere protein A ligand and discuss the binding sites in both molecules. Binding capacity of M3A3 for VHH single domain antibodies is compared to values for MOPs. Examples of antibody fragments for which M3A3 can be used are shown. And finally, M3A3 is compared to other resin types used in the capture step for antibody fragments. So for full size classical antibodies that contain an FC region, the standard capture step is done with protein A. The binding of protein A to the FC region is pretty well described and takes place at the um, juncture of the constant domains 2 and 3 of the heavy chains. This binding consists primarily of uh, hydrophobic interactions, and since antibodies containing to the same subclass have an over 95% homology in their FC regions, Protein A is a, a suitable capture platform for a wide range of antibodies. Now, after monoclonal antibodies, a variety of uh, antibody fragments is becoming an important class of therapeutic proteins. For example, here on the right, um, uh, various forms of the antigen binding fragment are FOPs, and from the uh, variable domain of the heavy chain antibodies from camelids, the VHH single domain antibodies are derived. These VHHs are more stable than full size MOPs and can be produced in microorganisms. Now, due to the lack of an FC region, these antibody fragments cannot be captured with most engineered protein A domains. However, the M3A3 protein A ligand shows also a high affinity to VHH single domain antibodies. And when we compare the dynamic binding capacity data of M3A3 to other commercially available protein A resins, um, shown here by their um, chemistry of the backbone, we clearly see a highest capacity for M3A3, with the resin coming closest having a 40% lower binding capacity uh, with the disadvantage of not being caustic stable. So in order to identify the interaction sites between the M3A3 ligands and VHH single domain antibodies, we started a project to obtain the crystal structure of a VHH protein A complex. And in this next slide, you see a schematic overview of how this crystal structure uh, was obtained. So on the upper side here, um, first, a single domain, a single C domain of the M3A3 ligand was expressed in E. coli and subsequently purified through its his tag on a nickel MTA column. In parallel, a untagged VHH was expressed also in E. coli, and the periplasmic proteins were extracted by osmotic shock. In the next step, the um, complex was co-purified with the uh, histidine tag on the pure protein A on a nickel MTA column, which then uh, yielded the purified complex. And after crystallization of the complex, the crystals were beamed for X-ray diffraction, and by molecular replacement, we found a model for this complex. So this then resulted in the following complex and in the following crystal structure. 
Um, on the left, we see the three helices of the protein A molecule. And on the right, we have the typical structure of a VHH with the two sheets of four and five beta strands, respectively. The sheet with five beta strands corresponds to the site in a VH that normally interacts with the VL in a classical antibody. And the four beta stranded sheet is solvent exposed and does not participate in the antigen recognition. The three loops you see here on the top are the CDRs, and these are responsible for the complementarity with the antigen to be bound by the variable domain. Now the binding sites, so the binding sites uh, for the VHH, um, for the uh, protein A, are located in the framework regions one and three. And this is the site of the sheet with four beta strands, so which is solvent exposed and not involved in the antigen binding. And eight amino acids have their side chains uh, oriented towards the protein A molecule. And these are mainly polar and or charged uh, amino acids. So you can see here all the amino acids that are involved in the interaction um, between the VHH and protein A. So now we have a better understanding of, the, uh, of this binding between our protein A ligand and VHH single domain antibodies on a molecular level. And we want to see how we can interpret this binding performance in a downstream processing context. So when we compare the uh, dynamic binding capacity expressed in uh, grams of product bound per liter resin, when we compare this uh, for VHH single domain antibodies to full size MOPs, uh, we can see that these values shown here by the green data points are about uh, two to three times lower for VHHs than for molecular antibodies. However, the molecular weight of these antibody fragments is about 10 to 11 times uh, lower than that of a monovalent um, of that of a monoclonal antibody. So when comparing DBC values for different types of molecules, it's better to take into account their molecular weight. And when we do that, we get the molar DBC values, which are shown here in the blue bars. And these uh, molar DBC data actually give us a more complete comparison of dyna dynamic binding capacity for different molecule types. These molar DBC values represent a number of molecules that can be bound to the resin, expressed here in micromole per liter. And that way we have shown that about three to four times more monovalent VHHs bind per multimeric protein A ligand than for the full size MOPs. So that's an indication that not only the affinity is playing a role here, but also spatial limitations are determining how many molecules that can be bound. So on this next slide, we have an overview of the variable domain binding of Amsphere A3. And so besides the use for FC-containing antibodies and constructs, Amsphere A3 can be used for purification of the following antibody formats, like the VHH single domain antibodies and VH3 domain uh, containing uh, antibodies or constructs, like uh, the FOPs shown here, and a uh, range of fusion proteins like single chain variable fragments shown here on the right. And finally, I want to compare uh, our protein A resin with other types of resins that are used for uh, the capture of uh, antibody fragments. So ion exchange uh, resins and mixed mode resins will have uh, the possibility of having a higher capacity. However, the large advantage of a protein A resin is that the process development time will be a lot shorter and thus allowing uh, to bring new molecules uh, faster to the market. Also, since it's an affinity step, the purity is already very high after this capture step, combined with over 95% uh, recoveries, which will not be possible with uh, these types of resins. And linked to the limited process development is the fact that an affinity chromatography step has the potential to be used as a true platform uh, for antibody uh, fragment capture. And when we compare our protein A to other affinity ligands that are produced specifically to bind a certain antibody domain, a protein A has the advantage of having a very high caustic stability and thus allowing for a high number of runs and so lowering the overall cost 
per gram of product that is purified. And so with this, I am at the end of this uh, short webinar presentation. And I would like to thank the people involved at the uh, University of Brussels, Ablings and V, and of course the colleagues at uh, GSR Life Sciences. I thank you for your attention. And before we move over to the uh, Q&A session, um, I would like to ask you uh, one more question um, myself. And this is, um, do you in your company have uh, antibody fragments or single domain antibodies in your pipeline for which you uh, have now seen the uh, presentation of m 3 a 3 and for which m 3 a 3 could be a useful capture tool? So thank you, Gerald. And it does look like we have a couple of questions. So. I'll just wait for a couple more audience members to answer this whole question, and then we'll move on to the questions for you. Okay. So the first question is can you explain uh, DBC and the importance of DBC as a measurement? Um, so yes, this is DBC is a dynamic binding capacity, and so that shows that um, uh, how much of your product uh, you can bind to this resin at a certain residence time. So it's, it's, that's uh, hence the term dynamic. Uh, so you pump your feed solution uh, with your target molecule over the resin, over the column. And um, so for a given flow rate and a given uh, residence time, you will then show how large the capacity of this resin is for your target molecule. And this is typically um, expressed as the uh, capacity value at a breakthrough point of 10%. Uh, so you keep on loading, keep on loading um, your material until you reach breakthrough of the uh, resin, and then you uh, identify the capacity at a certain point of breakthrough, so usually that is 10%. So that's important to know the capacity of a resin in order to calculate the amount of resin that you will need in production to uh, purify your, um, your molecule. And um, so the higher the capacity, the less resin you need, and um, yeah, the cheaper the, your process your process is. Okay. Great. And how does one detect the answer A3 as an impurity in product? Is there a way to do that? Um, so you are probably referring then to the um, protein A leaching. Uh, so for to determine how many of the protein A ligands uh, leaches into the uh, aleut, so in the um, target product pool, uh, we have a validated um, ELISA kit, uh, which can be pur purchased uh, through Cygnus. Um, and if people have more questions on the technical details or the exact a product number or catalog number of this uh, ELISA kit, um, you can just uh, contact us and we will send you uh, all the information on the, on the ELISA kit. Do you have any data showing the difference between your protein A ligand and mixed mode or ion exchange chromatography? Um, so mm, we have not generated these data internally, but um, yeah, we uh, know, for example, that uh, we are with our protein A resin, um, so it always depends on which uh, antibody fragment construct that you have. Um, so we have done a large screening of 110 VHH molecules, and there the highest capacity that uh, we had was, um, I think the highest was 30 to 35 uh, gram per liter. And so I don't know by heart which, um, uh, which capacities um, will be reached for these uh, 
CH8 single domain antibodies with the ion exchange or mixed mode resins. And another question, will it bind to other species such as murine IgG1 and rat IgG2A? Well, this is um, very unlikely that it will happen um, through the uh, variable domain. So it can be that for the uh, murine uh, IgG2A that you, you have binding, um, but that will then be through the FC region of the, uh, of the antibody. So we have shown, um, so it's also shown in literature and in our own data that the binding to the variable domain um, is mainly restricted to or VHH single domain antibodies or VH3 um, domains of the, um, let's say, the FAP region of a full size map. Does this binding work with all of the VH subtypes? Um, so no. Um, it, is, it will be uh, restricted to uh, VH3 domains. Um, but of course, um, so VHHs is, is, is a different story because they are um, from the heavy chain antibodies and then they are further um, modified um, as their, their uh, VHH single domain uh, antibody. But when you will look at your FOP or your single chain variable fragment um, that is uh, humanized, uh, it is restricted to the VH3, uh, members of the VH3 uh, gene family. Okay. So I think that that's all the questions we have time for today. If we didn't get to your question, your question will be passed directly on to Gerald and he can follow up with you directly. Um, so thank you, Gerald. Thank you. Thank you to the audience for joining us. The recorded version of this webcast will be available for on-demand viewing on our website, and as a registered attendee, you'll receive a follow-up email providing you with a direct link. You'll be able to view these slides and these questions. We look forward to having you join us at our future Bioprocess International Ask the Expert webcasts. Look for those announcements in your inbox. Thank you.